Welcome to Sailing Vessel Seeker. Apparently, this thing's supposed to be a sailboat. We gotta make that happen, even though we're gonna need some wind. This is your typical Oklahoma afternoon. 100 degrees, no wind. Oh wait, there's some over there. No rush, there's lots to do. In fact, I gotta straighten that mast out again. It wiggled with the engine running, so it went back to where it was, so it's getting turned around again. So a couple of come-alongs and a crowbar, and she's moving. Fortunately, we did this once before, so she's coming really easy. A little more here. There, she budged. This time, we'll put some weld in her. And thanks to Danny, one of the captains on the uh, tugboats that come through here, he has confirmed that uh, I do need to lower the mast. But we're prepared for that. See, I got an extension on there along with that crow's nest. And all that can come off, and that drops me about three and a half feet. Because otherwise, I'm going to clear a couple of bridges by inches. And that doesn't sound like a great idea. Let's have three and a half feet instead. So this is where we need to put a little steel in and weld it up. Keep it in there good. This section of the boat is called the partners. They hold the mast and there's a lot of steel underneath there. So it's not just a weld on deck, there's framing under there too. That's gonna feel good to weld again. Yeah, I got a nice even gap around it. And this is where the hatchway on the bottom of the mast pass through the deck. So I'm gonna make a patch for that. Turned into a beautiful, cool, shady day, but we're gonna get some rain. I just love using cardboard for templates. I picked this up from a YouTube channel called Project Binky years ago. Emergency, there's smoke downstairs. Press to silence. Emergency. Smoke alarm silenced. Downstairs. I had to put a long sleeve on. I'm getting a little too suntan there. But I'm keeping my sandals. They make you better welder. Okay? You won't drop slag off into your shoes if you wear sandals. Look who flew into town here. Literally flew into town. This is Greg Stein. He's done a lot of welding on this boat. Quite a bit. When, when, when was that? That was 2018. Eight months of welding. Yeah, because he, he took welding. And then he decided he doesn't want to be a welder. He wants to be a pilot, right? So uh, the aerial shots courtesy of Greg here today. He landed. We had dinner. It's a nice, nice way to drop in. Yeah. Come back longer. I will. I can make. I did welding today. It's always well done. I saw they, they look pretty good. For Stick and for me, stick it's not too bad. Okay, I'm not going to say they're great. Uh, I'm not even going to show you guys. <laughs> rust doctor in the past for uh, prepping the steel but I'm trying this Loctite stuff out it looks like it's the same kind of stuff it's a uh, acid and it uh, turns the rust black makes it more stable for painting over turns it into magnetite or something like that it seems to work rust doctor I was happy with that this is just apply two light coats and let it dry for 24 hours and then we can put the top coat on maybe someday I'll be caught up with everything on this boat no I'm not that insane you can never catch up with everything on a boat I have been really happy with my lift back here. Chris Pilling got it for me. It's an old winch came out of somebody's attic for their uh, home uh, elevator. We rigged it up so it would uh, lift the boat back here. It's just one of those things that I had so many dire predictions of, oh, that's not going to work and that chain's going to... Man, that thing works fine. <laughs> Somebody commented once. 80% of the things that have gone wrong with your boat has been predicted in the comments. I'm saying, like, no, that's not true at all. 100% of the things that have gone wrong with my boat have been predicted in the comments. See, that's the thing about the comments. It's like there's so many predictions out there that are just wrong. 
Um, and you need to take that into mind when you're building your things. You know, you're going to have a lot of people give you all kinds of warnings about all kinds of things, and they just get crazier and crazier if you just let it keep going. And um, if you look at my comments, I, I don't let it keep going. And, you know, you got to prove what you say sometimes because it just gets a little too ridiculous. Time for a little two-part epoxy. This is a Marilock 2. I get this from Blake over at Single Source Industrial Coatings in Tulsa. Fantastic company, fantastic product. And I get my pimento cheese spread from Walmart. Makes a great mixing cup when you're done. What I like about this product is it's half and half, so it's easy to measure. Part of this paint, I got real cheap. The customer changed his mind on the color, and so I got his color paint for free. I just had to buy the hardener. Oh, and remember, it's a coating, not paint. Yeah, it's the first time we've done this. We're loading cargo from the dock to the tender, from the tender to the boat. And say hello to Peter Story. He's back in town. It's getting crowded down there, but I want to take all my stuff with me. I'll sort it out later. It's aluminum pipe to repair battens and, oh, a lot more rope. Like, I need that, but hey, I got it. You never know. Here's the Bobby Jones coming by. Really close coming by. I guess he wants to look at us, but we get a good look at him too. He is going slow today. Empty too. Look at this. What a beautiful sunset. Got some clouds rolling in. Gonna have some shade tomorrow. I don't mind welding in shade. Today was 100 degrees. That was a bit much. Very important. Take the time to appreciate life. It's short. Well, we got a new water fuel separator to try out. This is so much better than just going down to the auto parts store. Well, all tied up. I think the way to learn how to do this is uh, just find worse and worse conditions to do it in. She's in the garage. Oh, that cool air is nice. Better do some welding before it gets here. First thing to do is get the mask where we want it. It's about right there. And make sure she's rotated right. day and new crop of mayflies. It was a beautiful morning. Let's see, we're working on that mass up there this morning. Well, we got a lot of rain. It took only a day for that to rust up. First step in here is to pump all that water out down there. So this is the bottom end of the forward mass. I got some lead uh, ballast stuck in there. I got a little bit packed around here, but there's a lot more that's going to come in here. So I'm just cleaning this up and looking for any damaged paint like that right there. And I'll fix that. That's probably bigger than it shows right there. Get that done, and then load up with ballast in here. This up here at the partners is where the uh, mass comes through from above. And it's all welded in from the top now. But I gotta clean up all this burnt paint and redo it. So I put the second coat of this on down there, and yes, that's the hold your breath technique. <laughs> okay, this is taking a lot longer than I thought it would, so I'm probably not going to sail here on Kerr Lake. Well, I'll, I'll put some sails up and push along a little bit, but not real sailing. And that's a really important thing to get across because, you know, when I watch these YouTube videos and you watch them too, you might make the mistake of thinking, oh, all that two masks getting welded in took, you know, a day, and, and then he's going to paint it up. and No, no, it's been a week. It takes three days to get one of these masks welded in, for me anyway, in this heat, to prep the steel, to weld it in, to grind it back down, to paint it. All that is a three-day process per mask. So we're looking at, I'm already a week into this. And you need to look at these videos and remember that. What you see on a video that takes five to 30 minutes is sometimes days of work. And Because I don't want you going out to your shop and thinking, oh, I should be able to get this done. No, oh, you know, congratulate yourself for having gone out to your shop and started on it. And you know, when I get out of bed in the morning, I know one thing that I want to get done, and that's all I got to take care of. I know two other things that I'll hit if I get that first thing done. And man, if I get that first thing done, I'm golden. You know, if I get the next two done, fantastic. You see, I was out here the other day and I was like, oh, yeah, I got three masts on this boat. I got to weld this one in too. And that makes me feel really good because when I was working on the top of this mast, you know, I'm tied to the mast literally and uh, it's being held on by four bolts. So the scenario going through my head is, okay, if the four bolts break and I go into the water, I'm still strapped to the mast. It's going to drag me to the bottom. Man, I got a lot of carabiners to get off to where I can reach back to the surface. So 
you know, it's not a bad idea to think through those things, but I'm going to feel much better going up this mast next time with it welded on at the base. But for today, I'm very happy. I got all the chain out, got all the water out, got all the mud out, got the paint scraped down, got the uh, rust preventer on there. I would just let it dry and we'll come back in and do a little bit more tomorrow here. Every day, do a little bit on your project and you should feel like a champion because in my book, you are. And I'll finally get all this ballast lead out here stacked up and ready to go in. And then these will go on top. These are my spare anodes. And then the other thing you got to do is take time to appreciate things. How beautiful the weather is, the lake is. You know, that's what it's all about. Okay, that's painted in, and uh, so is, well, um, all the rest of it. You know, you mix a little too much paint up, and then it's like, wow, that looks good. So, yeah, uh, I got most of it done. Just go make some more paint. It does look nice. And it's just typical maintenance on a metal boat. Something will always need painting on a metal boat. They constantly rust, okay? There's lots of advantages over fiberglass and wood, but rust ain't one of them. All right, we got everything here will corrode eventually. But... You know, it's just work. Get out there and do it. And if you need a reminder to get out there and do your work every day, here's one of mine. This is a Darwin. Darwin's the adventurous little guy. He's a bilge rat. Darwin wants to go places. And if I don't get my work done, Darwin doesn't go anywhere. And that's my tattoo as well. You know, having a Chinese junk sailing ship tattooed on your arm reminds you of what you're supposed to be doing. So we're working at it. We're going to be a sailboat sooner or later. Oh, and if Darwin's not enough and you want the mother load of SV Seeker merchandise, check out what's on the website, okay? It is a box that we made for our launch party. It has a metal crab in it. It has uh, our coin in it. It has t-shirts in it. It's just stuff full of stuff. I'm not going to list it all here. It's expensive, but there's only three of them, so act soon. They'll be gone quickly, I think. And there's always Darwin. Look at that. What a beautiful morning. That's the moon going down, and the heater's coming up on that side, and uh, it's cool that I can get down in that front compartment and scrape a little more paint off I found. It needs to be repaired. And that's the way it works, isn't it? And I'm going to get this thing done in it. Oh, there's this other thing. <laughs> Marquette Transportation. Finally, I get to kind of look down on one of them. I'm going to take the opportunity to do some of this wiring differently here. I got way too heavy a cable run up here, and I thought I was going to run these separate. I'm just going to put them all together. It doesn't make any difference having them separate. So, Well, it's all done. We've circumcised the mass there, and we left the gin pole on. That's the uh, aluminum pipe that sticks up there, and it's got a uh, pulley on the top of it, and the line for it is run down inside the mass. And we need to do that because we've got to put an anchor light up there so we don't get run down by a barge. Yeah, that'll be big enough. Now we'll secure our light bulb to that. So up the mast it goes. There we are, one temporary anchor light. That'll be fine. Oh, and I've been asked several times about lightning in a steel boat and a steel mast, and it's actually a fantastic thing because you want to conduct any lightning strike into the water. So down a steel mast, through a steel hole, into the water, through the anodes is a fantastic way to go. Uh, it's a lot more uh, iffy on a fiberglass boat that might have water in the laminations because it could uh, pass through those laminations. It should have a copper wire that goes down, but you know it's just a copper wire. If it gets into the laminations and hits that water, it vaporizes it. And it basically, it explodes. It turns it to steam. Uh, wooden boats, same kind of problem. They got to have a conductor coming down the mast into the water. Captain Cook was one of the first guys that ha had his anchor chain hauled to the top of a mast after watching another warship explode. <laughs> another beautiful evening. Tomorrow, a little more painting and uh, move some ballast around and maybe we'll even try and stretch a sail out a bit. Believe it or not, Jack, the guy who drew the lines for my hull, says we'll do most of our sailing on the foresail. Alright, that's why I don't want my chain wet down in the locker. Look at all that zinc corrosion coming off of there. So for now, that's where all our extra chain goes. Three pieces of it. Put the shackle on the end, it makes it a lot easier to find that. Yeah, and once you start painting stuff, you find, oh yeah, I need to paint that thing too. So slowly it gets done. What's that? Lake Lincoln. Oh, for outdoors? Yeah. yeah. Great place to run okay, going up the mast today, but doing it the easy way. Alexandria is out, so she's just using the halyard on the winch down there. Pull me up. 
there's Callahan's Cove Marina. It's been our home for a while and we're gonna say goodbye to it soon. All right, that's good. Time for a swim. The sun is going down, but it cooled off enough. I could come out and play with the Lazy Jacks. They pulled them tight. They're the uh, crow's foot looking things that hold the sail bundle. And that's not really good up there at the top because that looks like it's binding as it comes out of the bottom of that pulley. Yeah, it is. That's not great. I need to move it to the outer side of that. Well, yeah, let's go up again, but it's in its uh, crutch anyway. And that's an improvement. So we'll do some lift tests with it tomorrow and see what we can do. Then I gotta put a pulley or a something over on the mast so that I can redirect it into here because that is really loaded. Yeah, it's probably just that pinch up there. And there she goes. What a beautiful sunset. Mud Dauber's got himself a spider. That is cool. And he can fly with it, just like an eagle carrying a fish. My thanks to the Tulsa Fire Department for the donation of some old hose. This not only makes good chafing gear, but it protects your ropes when you're welding around them. And you get two layers. You got the hose and you got its chafe guard. Check this out, a mud dauber wasp built his nest inside there. And look what fell out. There's a spider, 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 two of them, another one, a big one, and another one, and another one. So it looks like the babies were fed well. I've got some one inch stainless Keschel 40 pipe, and I'm gonna make a cleat out of it. At least I'm gonna give it a shot. You can buy these for about uh, twice the cost of materials, so it's not a big savings. It's more like, I just wanna try. That ain't too bad. You know, maybe we could put a uh, ball bearing on there or a washer or, or cut out a round piece. Uh, you also could leave it open. There was some famous boat designer. He had this hollow hardware on his boat to save weight, you know? You can sell rich people anything. Hurt Shaw? What's the name of that guy? Yeah, messier but faster. Hurt Shaw? Who was Hurt Shaw? First one I think I folded the tips into soon. This one I hit from, more from the side and pushed the whole tab in. Yeah, like that a lot better. Wow, that is. Dead calm out there. I'm not sure what to do to stop from cooking it like that, except be better and faster with it. Maybe I can drop it down a little bit and let the uh, vice be a heat sink next time. these things people will say eh, you could have just bought one for uh, not much more it's like yeah it's true but you know you're not counting into what is the value of the skill that you're learning too you know it's like yeah you could be a rich kid by your dad giving you all the money or you could actually go to school and make your own there's a difference in the two Is no wind. You know, the cool thing is, you can see a fish jump a quarter mile away. Look at that. It's Nessie. Or a bunch of shad. Hershoff, that's the guy. There's a museum of his boats in Bristol Road Island. It's a good one. And he developed these cleats that uh, see they're hollow and they have this nice curve shape to them, like a woman. And that's what he had in mind marketing through sex. That still looks too hot to me, but I got it way down on 30 amps. I just don't know. I like, I like the penetration it gets when it's hotter. You know, it looks better with the soot brushed off, but I still think I'm getting it too hot. But I'm not sure those little dimes uh, have much penetration in them, so I don't know. 
I like it hot enough to dig in. Holding on this side, bowed it up a little bit, gonna shrink it down. We'll call that a feature. Bloody hot out here, but there's no wind, so welding is an option. Maybe about right, right there. So this is gonna hold the line from the lazy jacks. I'm kind of guessing where I want this to go. I know it has to be on this side of the mast because this is called the chimney. All the lines can come down this side. The sailor uses the other three sides. So I'm safe over here, but exactly, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. Let's just be honest with it. But the lovely thing about it, I can always cut it off and put it somewhere else. And I'm thinking maybe there'll be another one here, so I'm shifting it this way. Okay, actually ended up needing a windbreak. Mm, burned up a little bit of the galvanizing, but not bad. I mean, for me, that's a real improvement. Well, I'll see if I can pull it off. It stayed on the mass where it's supposed to be. That's nice of it. So eventually we'll have a, I don't know, maybe a winch and a jam cleat here. That's the thing that the rope can go through and we can lock it into. Um, or we could just use this. For now, I'm gonna use a prusik. Now I don't know many knots yet, but this one is just damn handy. It's a climbing knot actually. I use it for repelling and I've done that for a long time. So you get some wraps around there, run that back through and that will tighten up like nothing else. Put that around the bottom, snug it up. Yeah, that's cool. So this one is free now. It's all right there. Ooh, hold her up there in the air like that. That is what lazy jacks are all about. And you know what? When you get burned by a piece of steel and then you think, I haven't welded on that you know it's hot my hat is off to all you guys who work out there and farms and ranching and roofing houses and firefighting and whatever else it is that's a calling that keeps you outside in the sun in the summer bravo you want to beat crew on seeker you've got the right stuff Well, that's kind of cool, but that's about as much as I'm ready to do because I don't have any sheets on this sail. Yeah, she needs a lot more work. But the halyard arrangement's looking pretty good. That's this line here that's uh, lifting up the sail. Goes up, comes back down, connects to the yard there. But that may be the location where I want something permanent. This is just a temporary block that we use, and I just got it tied down there to the bow roller system. But about right there, no. It's snagged in our bolt. It needs to be lower than this. But once we get all this figured out, we'll got to do something permanent about right there on the mast. You know, maybe it needs to go between those. Yeah, that didn't have much load on it. It ought to be on the inside of this. And then head back. And I'm going to put a little sheave there on the main. Maybe I just want a sheave out here, and then I don't have to have one on the main. Yeah, I got to have this lower than these perels, and I also need to put rollers still on those perels. So yeah, this will be lower down. I need to come back down to about right here. And I think I'll put my sheave out here. Yeah. Okay, well, next video. Down on Dardanelle, because we're headed out. I wanted to do some sailing here on curb, but that ain't gonna happen. Well, any more than that, because I just ran out of time, you know, but you know, don't let those calendars kill you, because if you think about them too much, they're depressing. Okay, if you got out in your shop, you're a champ, remember that. And then some sheets would be nice. We gotta control it once we get out. Oh, this has been a long time coming. Can't wait to get this done. And remember, life's short. What'd you make today? <laughs>